Welcome to the second day of the second International Congress on World Civilization and Historic Routes. This Congress is jointly organized by the Ministry of Tourism of Republic of Bulgaria and the United Nations World Tourist Organization. We had a very interesting day yesterday. We had some great sessions, very interesting, very entertaining as well. I hope today will be even better. So without further ado, I'm going to present you our first speaker today. I would like to introduce Mr. Jens Trenard, Executive Director of Mekong Tourism Coordinating Office, who is going to give us more details on successful promotion and branding a historic route. Educated at Cornell University with a Master's of Management in Hospitality, Mr. Trenhardt was recognized as, as one of the travel industry top 100 rising stars by Travel Agent Magazine in 2003. He was listed as one of the Hospitality Sales and Marketing Association International's 25 most extraordinary sales and marketing minds in hospitality and travel in 2004 and 2005 and named as one of the top 20 extraordinary minds in European travel and hospitality in 2014. A member of the UNWTO Global Panel of Experts and PATA board member, he also served as past executive global board member of Hospitality Sales Marketing Association International and was the past chair of PATA China. A dual citizen of Germany and Canada, he now lives in Bangkok, Thailand. Mr. Trent Hart, the floor is yours. Good morning. Thank you for these kind words. I should pay you afterwards for all the nice things you said about me. Thank you, <laughs> um, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank um, the Ministry of Tourism Bulgaria for uh, inviting me and hosting this important event and also would like to thank the UNWTO uh, for extending the invitations to have me come to Bulgaria. It's my first time in Sofia and uh, so far it's a, a lovely place. Um, sometimes when you live in Bangkok you forget that it's not all hot, uh, um, the same temperature in other places. So I mean I actually didn't really bring a coat and a sweater. So. I'm looking forward to the tour, but I might be freezing a little bit. But anyhow, I look forward and I thank you for all the hospitality you have me here. So I'm based in, in Bangkok. I wear two hats. I'm the executive director of the Mekong Tourism Coordinating Office, and I'm also the CEO of Chameleon Strategy, which is a UNWTO affiliate member. Uh, I used to be with the Canadian Tourism Board, uh, head of global marketing strategy. So I've been working on the tourism side on the public sector for a while, and then before I was also head of e-commerce for Fairmont Hotels, Fairmont Raffles, Swiss Hotel, uh, based out of Canada. Um, so a little bit uh, for those of you who don't know much about the Mekong Tourism Co uh, Collaboration, um, it is a collaboration framework between the six member countries of the Mekong uh, the tourism region, the greater Mekong sub-region. Uh, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, and China. And with China, it's uh, uh, Yunnan and Guangxi. So as you can see in the map, it's uh, actually the fastest growing tourism region in the world. Um, we had around 60 million international arrivals in 2017, with Thailand taking um, the main share. But um, what we've seen in terms of trends is that, number one, all the countries are increasing as it relates to numbers. Um, but number two is that um, we have a lot of growth uh, when it comes to domestic travel and inter-regional travel. Uh, so the ASEAN countries, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, and so they're growing and, and they're traveling within the region. That also changes how we develop products, where before the main marketing goal was always more overseas, you know, North America, Europe, Australia. And while that is still happening, we're seeing a big shift into more regional travel, obviously led by, by China and India, uh, but also a lot, as I said, with ASEAN countries. Now, even though we're growing, we do have, obviously have a challenge. Um, because um, 
we want to develop a brand. When I was appointed to this role by the government, um, first one was, you know, how can we build a tourism brand for the Mekong region? Um, and also, how can we collaborate uh, with the public and the private sector and develop capacity um, when it comes to tourism experiences and, and, and um, uh, facilities on the ground, cross-border facilitations, visa, and, and things like that. So obviously, um, uh, that's a big challenge, especially as we don't have that many resources. But then we look back and said, actually, we do have a lot of resources because if everybody just contributes a little bit, we have a lot. And that became our main strategy for the Mekong region. So really, see, like, how can we build an engagement platform to have everyone, or give everyone the ability to contribute from the government, to the private sector, to even the residents and the travelers? How can everyone be part of our movement? Now, obviously, we're living in, in a world of digital transformation. Digital transformation is, is also the theme of uh, for, of the UNWTO for this year, and we're always uh, being asked, you know, what do we do when it comes to digital transformation? And from my standpoint, it's actually very simple. It's not so much about blockchain and big data and so on, but how can we leverage digital and data to empower our employees, empower, um, um, engage our customers, optimize operations, and transform the products? In short, how can we get more efficient and, and leverage technology to engage uh, all the stakeholders. Um, now, I want to step back for a second because I talked about branding, and, and also I think branding is in the, in the theme of or the title of my presentation. And when we look at branding, normally we think of a brand as of a logo and a tagline, you know. And there's still a lot of marketing companies that make a lot of money by creating just that, a logo and a tagline. But I think in the, in, the, in the world of the internet, it's not about a tagline and a logo anymore. It is about reputation. You know, you know if you have worked a little bit uh, in the Chinese market, um, you know how fast actually reputation can change. Uh, I started a company called Dragon Trail in, in China in 2008, which is uh, probably the, the, the main company helping travel and tourism brands uh, to market to Chinese consumers via digital. And we've seen very quickly you know, how, if there's just some political change or if there is a, um, some, some danger, outbreak, whatever it might be, suddenly Chinese tourists may stop into a country. You know? So reputation can change also on social media and suddenly your brand, you know, what you thought had a very strong um, a threshold drops down. You know? So I think when we, if we change the word brand to reputation, you know, we actually get a lot more conscious on how to develop a brand and how it actually uh, is working. Ads don't work the way they used to because we get a lot of messages every day and most of them we actually ignore. Um, so a lot of people actually, a lot of brands spend a lot of money on uh, advertising, um, actually three times more, um, you know, as, as, a, uh, as last year, but we see a return on investment of 5% less, you know. So what does it tell us? It tells us that maybe a lot of the brands are not spending their money and their resource in the most optimal way. What we do know is, though, that user-generated content strengthens consumer trust, uh, and it drives sales. Actually, people are six times more likely to buy a product, you know, if it is driven by user-generated content or reviews. We all know TripAdvisor, and there are always, there are always a, a lot of other ways to drive consumer strengths. But, you know, user-generated content, in many ways, is not integrated into the marketing mix as it could be. Now. The other thing that we always hear a lot about is storytelling. And storytelling becomes even more powerful if it's not driven by the brand itself, but if the consumer and the traveler is put into the picture of the story. And I think we have a, have a presentation coming up that, that brings that really to life and makes it very tangible. So storytelling is very powerful. And it's powerful because it's a marketing tool for brands 
to get in touch with their audience, to resonate. When I was um, head of global marketing strategy for Canada, we had a lot of pictures around vast sceneries. And Canada, as you know, is a beautiful country. You see, you know, mountains, rocky mountains. You see the sea. You see, and a, a big market was the German market. The German market likes these kind of uh, sceneries, but the U.S. market, they are a little bit scared of the vast wilderness. Um, so well, we, we changed the brand, and actually whenever we had a picture, we had people in the picture. And our mission was that you could exchange that person in the picture with yourself, meaning that you could say, well, you know what, I could see myself having the same story. And that's when it becomes powerful because people then resonate with that content piece, if it's a video, if it's a picture, you know, and so on. Now, storytelling is done a lot on social media. Obviously, it's nothing new. We've seen all the picture of people sitting in caves and telling their stories. But right now, when I go back to home and uh, tell my friends and my wife about uh, Bulgaria, um, it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And my friends may say, wow, this is great. I mean, I just came from Iran, uh, from the UNWTO conference there. It was my first time in Iran. It's a fabulous country. And maybe when I tell my friends, some other friends may say, wow, I want to go to Iran too. But on social media, I can reach thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, you know, and suddenly it becomes very powerful if it's on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, blogs, and so on. In fact, 2.5 billion pieces of user-generated content are shared every day. 2.5 billion every day. That's a lot of pictures. Now the question is, how do you, you know, get to motivate your sh shareholders, your travelers, your residents to share their experiences in visual format, pictures and videos, and to really promote and tell their story to inspire other people? Here's one example from Australia. Someone took a picture which went viral, you know, just a couple hours afterwards. Um, picture with a turtle. Uh, got 61,000 likes in just uh, a few hours. Obviously, that's a, a very iconic picture, but you can see how powerful just a simple image can be to inspire people to travel to a destination. Um, and if we do that, it strengthens consumer trust, it lifts engagement, and it drives sales. And it drives sales even more if we you know, bridge that gap between media and commerce which we call social commerce, when actually we not look just at the picture itself or the video itself, which just is a media piece, but we link it with commerce, where then we inspire people to actually transact, book a hotel, go on a trip, you know, go into a restaurant, whatever it might be. And we can even top this more and we can go into collaborative social commerce. Now, these are a lot of words just in five minutes of the presentation, but you can see that when we all work together, you know, if you remember my first challenge slide, you know, we don't have resources, but if we all work together, we can actually be very powerful. And the idea is if everyone is promoting the Mekong region in some kind of way or form, suddenly we don't need a marketing budget of a million dollars a month, but everyone is telling their story and then we can even be more powerful than having a marketing budget of a million dollars a month. So what did we do? We have the Mekong Tourism Coordinating Office, which I, which I head up, which is a secretariat for the six governments, and we have a, a delegation from Cambodia here, uh, the Director General of the Ministry of Tourism Cambodia, and you can ask him, uh, you can ask Mr. Shak, you know, how do we work with the countries directly? You know, how does the secretariat work and how do we execute initiatives? And we've done it in a way by creating a public-private partnership called Destination Mekong. And with this public-private partnership actually allows the countries to invest into projects and also the private sector to invest into projects in a very tangible way. So we created, you know, various um, opportunities. Now again, it is about engaging the businesses regardless of size because many times the tourism board and I used to be there with, with Canada, only works with the big companies. 
you know, in our case, Fairmont Hotels, Air Canada, Delta Hotels, and so on. But the small businesses, a little restaurant or a little walking tour, they are not part of the marketing strategy of a bigger tourism brand, you know. It's always like, okay, if we bring people, you'll benefit, but they're not part in, in order to be able to collaborate. How can we do that? And always leverage the power of visual media, as I said before, and enabling businesses to promote their offers in real time, which then in the end also drives um, exposure for the destination as a whole. And in the meantime, we also build capacity by doing that, by creating all these tools, we're lifting the, the, the ability of these small businesses to actually promote their businesses even be more effective. So as I said, we created various initiatives. Um, some of them are actually are quite award-winning now, which wasn't our intent. But Mekong Moments is, is uh, our uh, social commerce uh, platform, which I'll talk about. The Mekong Mini Movie Fest, which I mentioned as well, is our campaign within the Mekong Moments platform, which just won a big award, and I'll mention that. We have the Experience Mekong Collection, which is a collection of responsible tourism businesses, small businesses around the region, where everyone um, who has maybe eaten in a, in a small little restaurant, in a little hotel, have experienced a social enterprise, can nominate that business. We have an advisory board you know, to then uh, endorse that business. And then we work with a university where we select every year six businesses, one from each country, to write a case study so actually the industry can learn how these businesses have innovated to create uh, experiences and leverage uh, responsible practices. Mekong Stories, which is our kind of like online magazine to tell stories, and this is um, a different kind of magazine. We're looking to kind of bring it out uh, and launch a website, but right now uh, we're working a lot with bloggers and influencers, and then this content is syndicated. It's syndicated to platforms like Mekong Moments, but we're also working with tour operators, hotel companies that want that content as well. So it's, it's more like a platform to syndicate uh, powerful story content to our uh, community of travel businesses. Mekong Trends is our inside platform, and MIST uh, is very interested, interesting because that stands for Mekong Innovative Startups and Tourism, and with that, uh, we actually leverage um, young, passionate entrepreneurs and startups because we believe that the legacy platform of tourism in the region sometimes is unable to actually disrupt the marketplace, and it needs new solutions and new thinking. Uh, and there are lots of startups out there, but there is a gap between the industry and these startups. And we bridge that gap via this program. It's a, a co-project between the Mekong Tourism Office and the Asian Development Bank and supported by the Australian government. I won't talk too much about this in this presentation, but if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. So about Mekong Moments, uh, it is what we call our social commerce campaign platform. Um, it is a cooperative campaign where we enable any organization, regardless of type and size, to be part of promoting themselves and as such also promoting the destination as a whole. It's a turnkey solution, so any business can be, um, uh, have a listing for free on, on the platform and then can upgrade because we make, have to make this platform sustainable, obviously. So there are various revenue streams built in you know, but they're all creating more value for the organizations. We have a whole training platform around it uh, to train these businesses how to leverage the platform, how to look at storytelling and social commerce. Uh, and it, again, it's a, it's a public-private partnership, so it's, not, uh, it's, it's a platform that's really owned by the entire industry. I'll show you a quick video, and this video is uh, one actually uh, an award at ITB Berlin. Um, but this, when you see all the pictures, you can see that all the content is actually aggregated from experiences uh, from other people having in the Mekong region. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Stop trying. 
So what's unique about the video is actually that this video can be customized by any country. So we customize it for Laos, for Luang Prabang, uh, for Intercontinental Hotel Group, um, for one ho um, a sustainable lodge in, in southern Thailand. They use it actually for recruiting um, to get uh, people excited about their brand. So again, um, this is a platform, but then you know anybody can use this video to promote it. And it, it has stories, so you can search for stories wherever you are. Um, but So we created a model, and the model uh, is around travelers, where we inspire travelers you know, about stories. Um, they create more information, uh, they share their, their, their experiences, and then it can be booked, you know, and they travel, and they create more content. So this is really, and how do we inspire and motivate people to share their content? They put it on their own social media, so they have still are in control of their content, if it's a video or a photo, because if you are a photographer or, or a videographer or, or just a blogger, one thing that these people hate more than anything is tourism boards and hotel companies doing a photo contest, you know, saying, oh, you can win this nice prize, send us your photo, and whenever you send this photo, we own it, you know? So bloggers say, like, whenever we see this, we almost, like, boycott the entire country without actually the tourism boards many times knowing that, that it's actually going negative, and I see the nodding in the front row. So when it is actually posted on their own Pinterest or, or uh, Instagram or Twitter, they have still in control. They tag it. We aggregate the content, you know? So when they delete it on their own Instagram, it's also deleted on our platform, you know? Now, on the destination side, how do we engage the industry? Well, we engage the industry by creating mini social media contests. So I might, you know, I stay in this hotel, you know, I take a photo, maybe across the street, um, I put it on my Instagram, I tag it, but I also tag it with the hotel, with the hashtag of the hotel. And the hotel can say, well, every day, every week, every month, we give out a free price, free stay, or free dinner, or whatever it might be, and so I'm motivated, but I'm also motivated to take good pictures because I want to win that prize. So that not, in, not only increases the quantity, but it also increases the quality. And what we're developing now is also an affiliate program where, let's say, a hotel brand like this can say, okay, whenever, let's say, um, someone takes a photo, let's say Patrick takes a photo of this hotel, and I click on it and then book a stay that, you know, Patrick gets a commission. So he's almost like a virtual travel agent. So it also drives business directly to the hotel. But again, as Patrick wants to get the commission, you know, he's making sure that his photo is actually extra nice, that it inspires people. So again, it drives the quality of the platform. And that then drives business for the hotel. And the more hotels and restaurants and museums do that, the more the destination is promoted. You know? So this is how it works. Now, on the local side, we're creating something what we're calling the Ambassador Program. Now, the Ambassador Program um, allows young people that are web savvy and want to have their own business to claim a destination. So they may claim, let's say, Luang Prabang in Laos and say, you know what, we do the trainings, we help uh, the businesses to understand how to leverage Mekong Moments. Uh, we help them to get their website up, we help them to do campaigns, and they get a commission back. So that we're actually building a whole platform of young entrepreneurs, which becomes our virtual workforce to drive this initiative. And also that drives capacity, that these small businesses that before didn't have the ability to run a social media campaign or their website was there, but it looked close to awful, you know, that now have something that actually lifts the entire capacity of the destination and the region. Now, quickly, I mean, so we were, um, uh, Google brought out a new report, which was done by Oxford Economics and Pata, and we were featured as one of the, um, uh, the, uh, the digital platforms at the global showcase, along with um, uh, Grab and Kluk and Airbnb. So, I mean, also these are big companies with big investments, and then we were the, uh, the other uh, organization that, that, they plat uh, that they showcased. And also the European Travel Commission, um, they brought out a new report, and we were featured with Mekong Moments also in that report. We just won two awards. The only reason I say that is um, 
we are at a very early stage in developing this platform, but because the thinking is so different in really engaging the community and the stakeholders, that it gets traction already in the industry. Now, how do we create the stakeholder engagement? I talked about it. We engage the local industry by giving them tools, by getting the travelers to tell their stories, to offer categorized content, and then really combine uh, integrated online and offline activities. So, again, it's really about motivating people to share their content and tag it. People are sharing their content already, but how can we get them just to add that relevant hashtag? You know, it shouldn't be that hard, but it needs to be done on the ground to really drive that. We just had a breakfast this morning with the Minister of Tourism in Cambodia um, that really want to be very active now to push this forward, and we're talking about ways to communicate it via TV, but also on the airport. When you arrive at the airport, you're at immigration, there could be little cards that you pick up and you can win a trip to Cambodia, and there are instructions how to share your content and tag it. You know? Because what gets people excited about sharing their content? It's pride, um, but it's recognition. Um, and, and having incentives to do so. And then, as I mentioned, if anybody has created all these small businesses, create these micro social media contests, suddenly that creates a cloud where people say, you know what, I want to try this spa, I want to try this restaurant, and then more content is being created, and that content is not just on our platform, because normally when there are photo contests, that content is only on the tourism board website, but we have this content out, all the people that actually share it on their social media platforms, which is a lot more powerful. So this is how Mekong Moments looks like. You see the homepage, all these images come in. We have three levels of security, uh, artificial intelligence that filters out content, and we have a social media team on our base that looks at content, and this uh, could be you know, quality of content, this could be uh, obtrusive content, and then the third level is actually at the business level, the tourism board, or the hotel, or the restaurant, they can also, so everyone is in control of the content. And then the, the, the platform owner, in this case, uh, Mekong Tourism, can then say, okay, well, we let a business override. So, for example, if um, a restaurant says, you know what, I want this picture, this was already taken out, but I want it, they can override it if we let them to override it. And then this picture is only on the restaurant website, on their image board, but not on the home page. So you can see that we give control. And these image boards can be embedded into anything from Facebook into their websites and, and, and so on. So here's uh, a picture, um, and we, we associate the hashtag of that image with the URL of that website, which is on our system. You know, so people register on Invoke you know, as a business. Invoke is the, the social commerce management platform. Then they can upgrade. We build a website builder in, like Wix or uh, other ones, where they can develop their platform, a website which is um, private label with their own URL. And, and then this URL is associated with the hashtag. So as you can see there in the red box, I can now click directly on to the website of that business. You know? So that drives social commerce. So now I can book you know, an experience with this elephant uh, conservation in Laos. Now, we also now created our first destination website for Laos. Um, so where Laos now has um, a new destination website. We just launched phase one, and it's powered by this social commerce technology, meaning that the images come in, and again, if I click on an image, I can go directly into that business or that experience you know, in Laos. I just don't see the picture, like if I go to Instagram and say, like, wow, this is great, but how do I actually experience that? But now I can do that, and I can filter it, and on the map, I see all the businesses as well, if they're just listed, it's for free, and, and they can upgrade to the website, as I said, and then link right on to the website, you know, which is on our platform. Uh, we also go thematic. Um, so we, we, I mentioned our Experience Mekong collection, which are all responsible businesses. So it's its own branded platform within Mekong Moments. Um, we're now also working with ASEAN uh, to do a food platform, so uh, a food platform for Southeast Asia, uh, and we're starting with Thailand on that. So again, you know, it can be with destinations, but it can also be with themes. Um, and you see here images coming in, all the responsible businesses um, have their own listing. 
We also go theme with heritage, so we're about to launch our Mekong Heritage platform. It's again, it's uh, branded, um, private label, but again, it's on the Mekong Moments uh, platform. As so you see here, we, we uh, put all the UNESCO heritage sites in the Mekong region on it, and then you can click through to the website, in this case of Angkor Wat in Cambodia. Um, another thing uh, which I think is mostly important for this conference is thematic routes. So multi-country thematic routes is obviously something that's uh, very important to our region because these thematic routes create an experience. They're, uh, they're creating travel intent, um, they're collections of themes, um, of culture, history, and food, um, and they also bring in the locals and, and um, engage uh, the, the tourism businesses. And they can become destinations in itself, like the Silk Road, for example, uh, or the Danube River. We're working now also with Thailand on a Buddhist uh, route, you know, so to create a whole uh, a separate platform for this Buddhist trail. How does it work? Well, in the past, we looked at thematic routes more in terms of uh, brochures, or it could be a website. But what do we see there? Well, we see all the sites, and we can see, well, if I go from uh, place A to place B to place C, you know, I can see, you know, this attraction or that attraction. But what it doesn't do, it doesn't integrate the businesses. You know, it doesn't in uh, integrate the experiences. And it doesn't integrate the experiences people have had by going on that route. The next presentation will talk about uh, someone who kind of traveled through the Silk Road and have had a lot of experiences. And I'm sure he took a lot of pictures and videos, but again, that content hasn't been shared you know, for people that are looking to have that same experience on the Silk Road, right? You will correct me later on. <laughs> but so, so we created with, uh, uh, with the Tourism Authority of Thailand, we created a private label platforms for all these um, thematic routes. Uh, I'll take one, which is a southern coastal corridor, which is uh, connecting Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam. Uh, and again, it, it's uh, also aligned to the agendas of the governments, because these are economic corridors uh, where the governments are looking to drive uh, economic activi activities. So it's custom branded. You see all the experiences that are on that, uh, on that uh, route. Um, and there and there then can be again clicked and then uh, you link directly to the experience of that place you know and here are all the ex uh, all the experiences that people have shared on their social media aggregated and it has their own hashtag then for southern coastal corridor um, the last thing I want to talk about as I mentioned before is the Mekong mini movie festival so the Mekong mini movie festival is our own campaign that we've done. So as I said before, all the businesses or tourism board, they can do their own campaign, but we've done our own as well. And this was again a, a public-private partnership with the six governments and the private sector. And people share their 60 second video, 60 seconds or less, um, and put it again on their own social media, tag it, and we aggregate it. And each country has their own um, website where we aggregate the Cambodia videos, the Thailand videos, the Myanmar videos, the Vietnam videos, and then we give out prizes, uh, or actually not us, but the governments give out the prizes, you know, for um, the best, most inspiring uh, video. Um, so this is kind of like, I'll show a quick video, oh, it starts already. So this was our promotional video for the Mekong Mini Movie Festival. And again, each country or even business can customize this video, um, let's say for Cambodia, for Thailand, for Laos.
So what we've done is we, we then um, we integrate into our own conference, the Mekong Tourism Forum, where we give out the prizes. Um, but we have three types of um, mechanisms to vote. One is we have a, an expert advisory board, which has um, uh, filmmakers, CEOs of travel companies, and the ministries on it. So they vote. Then we have open voting, um, where people can vote from all over the world. And then we also engage the industry, because um, at the Mekong Tourism Forum, um, all the attendees, and we have one attendee in the room, Mr. Suat from, from Turkey, who joins us every year. So he was able to vote for his favorite video, and then we give out the prizes, and the prizes uh, actually uh, um, also look at conservation. Um, so here's you see um, the uh, customized website for um, the Mekong Minis, and we partner with WWF Cambodia uh, to also look at conservation. So the prizes actually look like um, a, a Mekong dolphin, and so we're looking to drive, uh, raise awareness of um, wildlife conservation with that. Now what I'm going to show you now is the winning video uh, from Cambodia. As you can see, as we had over 300 videos that were coming in, um, and we reached over 7 million people. 7 million people. So, I mean, 7 million people were inspired to travel to the Mekong region with no advertising budget at all, you know. So we had 700,000 video views, but these 700,000 video views were on our own platform. The 7 million came about because these videos are still on the social media accounts of the people that shared the video, that tagged the video. So again, for us, it doesn't matter if it comes to our own website. We don't care about that. You know, when I, I report to my board, and they say, like, well, how much traffic did you get? I said, well, you know what, here's a number, but it doesn't matter. I don't care about traditional website metrics anymore. I don't care how, many, uh, how much traffic I get to my website. I care about engagement and touch points and inspiration. We were able to inspire 7 million people to look at the Mekong region in a different way. And that's powerful. Now I show you this video, and this is the winning video um, from Cambodia. to explore a country. We? We chose the tuk-tuk. This video inspires people to pack their bag and go directly to Cambodia. This, these videos are sometimes more powerful than a video that's created with a big budget by the tourism boards. And um, I was with the Cambodia delegation with the minister and Mr. Suk in China um, a couple months ago and we showed this video and a Chinese tour operator came to us and said like, can I go to Cambodia? I'm inspired, you know. So again, this is very powerful. So to close up, you know, it's about collaboratively promoting a destination. It's not about pushing it from a brand, from a tourism board or a hotel company or so on, but it's about creating a platform that enables anyone to contribute and work together. It's about creating a model that incentivizes the businesses to have a goal and to have um, results. So if a business sees that they can drive business, drive sales or exposure through this platform, then they will do it, and in the end, it will promote the region or the destination in itself. So we created this model called the three E's, exposure, engagement, and earnings. So how does it work? A business creates a listing for free on, the, on our platform, and then they can upgrade uh, to a website. Now, when a business is registered or has their own website, 
This is a private label website. It's not branded Mekong Moments or Cambodia or Laos or food or whatever it might be. No, it's branded their own brand, their own hotel, their own restaurant and so on. But it sits on the platform and we, and we charge a small fee every month that is basically a licensing fee. So that's exposure. So when I share then an image, you know, and this image has a tag of, you know, let's say, restaurant in Laos, in Luang Prabang, it shows up on the Luang Prabang platform, it shows up on the Laos platform, the Mekong platform, the Southeast Asia platform, and maybe also the food platform, you know. And then when I click, I can go directly to that website, you know. And so the second E is about engagement, it's about driving these campaigns. And the third one is, you know, this aggregated content and drives business directly to that business and then collaboratively promotes the region, you know. So we have then platforms for destinations, for themes, and for brands as well. Um, if you want to learn more about our programs, you can download a, uh, an ebook which has all our programs in there, including our startup program. Um, we're just about to refresh that. We do it every year. And this is for the, for the industry to kind of learn how to uh, work with us and collaborate with us. And finally, I want to invite all of you to join us at our next Mekong Tourism Forum, which will be in um, beautiful Dali, Yunnan, in China, May 21 to 23. Um, we always work together with the UNWTO, um, and it's hosted, obviously, by the ministries, this one by the Ministry of Culture and Tourism of China. Thank you very much. I want to thank Mr. Trent Hart for this eye-opening speech. I had really great ideas just listening and watching all, all, all the, the videos and the presentation. It's really amazing. So as a filmmaker, I agree that telling stories is one of the best ways to promote whatever you want, especially touristic places and using social media like that. It's something that we must do, definitely. And uh, talking about stories, I want to present the next story, which is pretty amazing. You're going to see that. So it's my pleasure to uh, introduce to you our keynote speaker, Mr. Kai Marcus Xiong. I'm going to say a few words about him, and, and then he's going to present everything and tell his incredible story. With a background in finance, Mr. Xiong decided to pursue his life dream in 2017 with the Run My Silk Road initiative, a journey through the Silk Road aimed at breaking down barriers and intolerance through the means of sport and tourism. With the Run My Silk Road initiative, Mr. Xiong travels through a large part of the Asian Silk Road, a journey of 11,000 kilometers that started in Hamburg, Germany, and ended in Shanghai, China. Although injured on his way to Shanghai, Mr. Xiong was able to complete the journey and fulfill his dream. After his recovery, a similar feat was accomplished with a six-week cycle journey, 6,300 kilometers from Norway to Greece. Thessaloniki was his final destination when he participated as a speaker at the 8th United Nations World Tourist Tourism Organization International Meeting on Silk Road Tourism. His motto is, if you can think it, you can do it. And during his keynote speech here in Bulgaria, Mr. Xiong will share his experience on the road and inspire people to make the world a better place through the means of mutual exchange and tourism. Mr. Xiong, the floor is yours. Thank you. Silk Road belongs to no one, the Silk Road belongs to us, that's what I believe and um, I want to introduce you my initiative, I'm not a filmmaker so the videos I make is not that professional but maybe inspires you as well and I totally agree with the speaker um, ahead of me, um, we need to make the small things big, that means everyone who travels should share 
I'm 45 years old. I'm a German, but I'm married with a Chinese, so I, that's why I have a Chinese family name. And before this initiative, I just sit in the office. I just sit in the office uh, watching my screen and basically do my job. But then there is one guy in the world saying we have to build walls. And I say, no, we don't need walls. We need bridges. We need culture bridges. We don't need walls at all. And then I take the money of my wife, I take the money of myself and start this initiative. Headline is I have traveled the route and um, it's 12,000 kilometers and why he say it's 11,000 you will see soon. Es ist ein Lauf, wie ihn noch keiner geschafft hat. 12.000 Kilometer entlang der Seidenstraße. For me it was important that Sa the running is just a vehicle. Everyone is focused on, oh my God, this guy is running 12,000 kilometers. That's not the point. Please focus on the people you see, on the stories from the people, on the countries, on the places. Running is the vehicle because you not get media if you don't do anything crazy. That's a fact. If I go to you or you are a media producer and I say, hey, I'm a market, I, I never run, but I want to run to China, what do you say? This is your question. If I go to you and say, hey, I want to talk about Christianism, say, <laughs> that's what I experienced. Ein Lebenstraum, der sich ganz anders erfüllen wird als erhofft. Das Motto ist ja Run to Break Down Prejudice, also äh, Vorurteile abbauen, helfen. Wenn du sagst, ich gehe als Nichtläufer ähm, marathonmäßig von Hamburg nach Shanghai, guck der ein oder andere Mal. You have to tell someone, I never run before and officially in April next year I will make my first marathon in Hamburg. That's true. But I believe that's what you say in your entrance, if you can think it, you can do it. That's what I totally believe. But people need to see something they can prove it. So kam das. Ich habe eine chinesische Frau, einen Sohn. Ist also mein zweites Heimatland. Everything I did, I put in this project. That's why I really can say honestly, the Silk Road is my life. I quit my job. I give up my office. I leave my family. My son was just one year, and I don't know what happens. I really don't know what happens because. It's an adventure. You cannot prepare in a way you have a book, someone did it before, and you can copy it. It's not possible. So everything is done by heart, and you will see what means done by heart, and it starts with logo and all these things. The Silk Road, there's, there's a, we talked today, this morning, with the Indian lady. What's the Silk Road? There's so many ways. and. I have to choose one. I choose this one because there is already a company developed this way. They have support there and supply there. So I don't need to make anything new. But what I experience is there are so many other countries I want to cross on my Silk Road, but it's still not possible because you have to finance it. And again, if I come, if I come to you and say, hey, I want to run to China. I never run to China. Can you give me maybe 200,000 euros? No. Can you give me... If I had, yes. Can you help me with money? Yes, of course. For this project, 200,000 euros? <laughs> Thank you. This is the most answer I get. If you finish in our country, if you finish in my place, but sorry, I'm Chinese and Hamburg and Shanghai are sister cities, so I cannot tell the Hamburg government, hey, you're supporting me, but now I choose another city to finish. And you see a small detour here. You cannot run to China without visit your father-in-law, right? <laughs> I mean, they get upset. So you have to make a detour. The map looks quite nice, but it's 1,000 kilometers detour. And what people say he's just running to China to drink a coffee with father-in-law. My plane, by the way, is just 14 hours. Täglich 60 bis 80 Kilometer laufen durch acht Länder. Ziel Shanghai. The 60 to 80 kilometers is calculated, which is not harm the body. And I'm very happy that um, our former mayor from Hamburg, Olaf Scholz, now is Minister of Finance, take the patronage for this project. Because if you want to get media, and I go to media again. I'm nobody. I just sit in an office before. Can you make a little bit videos for me? Can you help me a little bit? They say no. I don't know why, but they say no. 
So, but if you have a, a mayor from a city or some other key persons and he invite media, of course they come. So that's something I, I want to put in your paper notes. If adventurers come to you and need maybe a person, just give a reputation and a name, support and prove the project, seriously, sure. There's many dreamers, they just have weird dreams. But if you can help them with just the person who put the reputation in, they get awareness, and this is awareness you get. That's quite simple and costs nothing because he's not paying me or something like that. He just use his name and invite the media for the announcement of this project. We make 33 culture bridge stops. That means on 33 places, I make a whole day event with the culture in this country or this place. But I get another family, a big one. Das erste Mal Papa aus einem Videocall zu hören oder aus einem Videoclip zu hören und nicht im Wahn. Du kannst mich anfassen, du kannst mich riechen, du kannst mich spüren, du kannst mich in Arm nehmen, wenn er traurig ist. Du bist einfach nicht da. Das zehrt bis heute noch an mir. Das ist schwierig. Den Alltag des einjährigen Xavier bekommt sein Vater unterwegs nur über Videos mit. Please raise your hands if you have children. What's the longest time you not see your children? What's the longest time you don't see your son or your daughter? And it feels horrible. So, and then you start to leave your family for unexpected time. You calculate maybe five months, but you, practically you don't know it. And you have to explain this to your wife. Hey, honey, you just migrated to Germany. You learn the language. You get new in a society. I'm not here for a while. I mean... I don't need to tell you what happens when you come back. <laughs> Silk were creating dreams like this guy. He meet me and he want to have also this kind of experience. Ist der 45-jährige nicht. Sein Freund Victor begleitet ihn mit einem VW Käfer. Egal wie holprig der Weg. That's our five-star hotel. And I prepare everything to do it alone because we could not find a suitable driver for a supply car. And four weeks before the start, Victor, who developed the route with me and planned the details, say, hey, I have a driver. I, I ignore him completely. Four weeks before the start, you don't want to hear anything, and especially no jokes. He call again, and he call again. He call four times to tell me he know a driver. Then he say, you don't want to know who's the driver? I don't believe there's anyone, sorry. And I don't have any motivation now to talk this shit. I say, yeah, but I come with you. But only with my car, not with the car you want to have. And he says it's a 48 Volkswagen Beetle with 34 horsepowers. And we have a trailer which is 750 kilograms. And I just ask him, you think the car can do it? And he say, you think you can do it? I mean, it's fair enough, right? So it's crazy to prepare you all from tourism industry. Visa for those countries. The car allowance to bring this car to these countries to organize how the car come back later in just four weeks. The trailer was not there, he only had the car. So organize a trailer, get it fine and sponsored, whatever. It's a new pressure, but it's also nice to have someone come with you. And then we start in Hamburg, 12th of March last year. We only had nine months preparation, which is very tight, because normally for these kind of projects, you need one and a half to two years, but I don't have the budget for that. I was very emotional because we don't expect there is many people coming. We just expect, okay, we start and make a nice picture and go. But again, when you get support just with a name from a mayor or some other small support, you can make it bigger, you can scale it up. And we get bigger and smaller sponsors. And um, again, Breakdown Prejudice means I take a Chinese sport brand to run with their shoes because in Germany we think the shoes are not good. So I run 12,000 kilometers, 11,000 kilometers with them. You see the firefighters, they're running for social reasons. So they come to this event and run with me. And they're especially happy for one friend, Frank, because he's overweight. Here is it. And he run with me because he have a new idea for his own purpose. So what the speaker before says is run, uh, make it big for the small people. We had one team meeting, and the team is just friends because you don't have budget. You cannot go to anyone and say, hey, I pay you for something. But what I'm 
be taught from my grandparents is alone you can reach many things in your life. But only united, only together, you are able to reach everything. So the whole project is I'm just the one who acting. But the people behind is the power and the key. But it's also a fact we only have one team meeting to organize everything. We meet only once. We don't have budget and we don't have time and they all have families and have to work. And people told me before it's not possible. And I say, why not? If we want to do it and we can think it, we do it. At the same time, I believe Silk Road is, is a kind of future because the people we meet and the people we get in touch, they are the key person. We try to put them in the TV, not only ourselves. Mittlerweile hat er schon über 2000 Kilometer der gesamten Strecke nach Shanghai geschafft. And I like bloggers and I like website content, but I agree again with the speech before. If you have TV, you reach much more. But go to the TV station and say, please, can you air it? They say, no. They say, no. You say, please air it. They say, no. You know, it's not crazy enough or, oh, we don't know if you really can do it. Oh, no, you put a sponsor in the picture. We don't like to show sponsors without payment. All these things. Listen carefully. They put sponsors in the pictures without payment. They do that. They just don't know it. You have to blackmail people sometimes in a positive way. Sorry, it's the first mayor of Hamburg first don't want to do it. Then I say, okay, I, I like he do it, but if he say no, what should I do? Then I take a mayor from Bavaria. So in Hamburg, if you take a mayor from Bavaria, they say, no, it's, it's not possible. Why? I know this guy is a friend of mine because I live there. I'm born there. No, 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 let us think about. I mean, it's blackmailing, right? Seine Geschichte fasziniert unterwegs viele. Neue Freundschaften entstehen. And with the support of UNWTO and other people, we find a way. When I start with this idea, I realize Hamburg and Shanghai have 30 years anniversary for sister citizenship. It's a good point. It helps you. At the same time, we have a Hamburg summit, which is every two years and the highest ranking meeting between China and Germany. It was the same time. So a new TV format starts to showing Chinese in Germany and Germans in China, but they have nothing in between. So many things you have to think about to match it and bring it together. So with this TV format, they want to show Chinese in Germany and Germans in China, they give me the chance to show every day two minutes live in TV. So every day two minutes live means I be in your country and I can sit there with my own phone and say, hey, hello, I'm in Afghanistan now. We meet just this beautiful lady and we're talking about the culture. So the people get experienced about the reality in the country. And from my perspective, it's the only way to break down prejudice, show reality. Show the real life of people. Don't show your own life. You cannot read it in a book what's the reality in a country. Treibstoff für Strecken, die viel länger sind als ein Marathon. Fast jeden Tag. That's my son, and he has the secret number. I try to raise him the same way like I'm raised from my grandparents. Is anyone knowing what this number can have a meaning? It's 1,000. When you be a baby and you just can crawling, how often you fell down before you can walk? 600, 700, 800 times. You never will give up, right? Because you want to walk, because everyone walks. If you learn cycling, you need about 500, 600, 800 times to learn it. You have more failed than success. That's normal. I listened to the story of, of, of uh, Afghanistan yesterday. There was many, many bad things happened. But you get up again. You get up again. So when you ask sponsors, I can tell you running is quite easy compared to that. Can you help me? No. 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 Please raise your hands if you ever apply for a job. And now lift the hands up if you ever get rejected for an application. And two times rejected or three times. You know this feeling after three times application you don't get a job. You know the feeling after five times application you don't get a job. But you can imagine the feeling after 815 
knows for your support. And all your teams say, hey, you don't realize it is not working. They say, thousand. When I, when I try 1,000 times, then I accept, I give up. That's what my grandparents told me. If you cannot do it, just try 1,000 times. If you really cannot do it, like school mathematics, my, my grandfather said, then you don't need to go to school anymore, but you try 1,000 times. And that's a key why many people that have a life dream are not successful. They're giving up with 200, 100, 80. And they don't know, soon you will get it. And I tell my son, I will never help you in your life. I just will help you to find out how you fix problems. But I not fix your problems. And that's why my appreciation for all the sponsors I get is much higher after you get 815 no's. If the first one say yes, the feeling is different. It's completely different. Then talk about the facts. The route was planned at 12,000 kilometers. 7,000 kilometers is before China, so the other part is in China, in just one country. We only have nine months preparation. We have desert, snow, mountains, all kinds of surfaces. Um, we have no money but high costs, and there's hundreds of regulations. When you go into other countries, there's, oh my God, this camera you cannot bring, the car have a problem, this you cannot do, this is not allowed. Make it easier for us, please, if there's any one of the administrations, make it easier for us. Every six to ten days we make a stop, like here in Lanzhou, they have the famous Lanzhou noodles. So this is a part of the live show we, we shown in the TV. And if you run in Germany, it's not really exciting as a German, you know? You just run Hamburg, Berlin, to the Poland border. It not feels special, but you have the most pressure on this tour because you have an accident there. Everyone say, ah, see, big mouth. A very big mouth. Just 200 kilometers and then stop. So you cannot accept anything bad there. But on the other side, our trailer was finished one day before we start. We get the trailer one day before we start. We could not fix anything inside. So we try to do this on the first days. In the evening, in the afternoon, after my running, we try to buy some boards. We fix some things inside. It's 1 meter 20 wide and about 2 meter 20 long. So can you imagine we just know each other for a couple of weeks and we stay together in a trailer for many, many months? Sleep together in this trailer and have fun together. Cozy. Cozy. And one of these two guys is running every day and sweating like hell. They don't have a washing machine, right? You must like each other quite a lot. And especially when we started, where you put your clothes? Outside is raining. Your smelly, sweaty clothes. Yeah, of course you put it inside. So, Again, it's a teamwork, and Victor is not here, but he have the same, if he's not here in this project, the project maybe will not happen. He have to accept this, and later we'll see what I have to accept. In Berlin, there's a Chinese coming, he say, I'm from Shanghai, what is this? Why you have this on your map? So you get awareness with this kind of trailer board, the sponsors get pictured there. All the media could not make the picture from the trailer without their logos. And we come to Poland, and what you see when you watch to my shoes? I mean, you see shoes, but is there anything else you can see? Yeah, there's Warsaw, Poland written on it. Remember this? We need it later. It was minus 8 degrees to plus 20 degrees. And 20th of March is the last time I see my family because I had a chance to bring them to Poland, to Poznan, to show my parents-in-law another city, another place. And that's the last few, the last real few of my son I had before I really leave him completely. And this video follows me the whole way because it's the only last life impression I had from him. Our trailer was too heavy, the car was too low, so we have to go to a car repair, we don't have money, but they very, very generous. They give us a small sticker put on the car, they repair our car. And it's frozen. And then your teammate came and say, hey, it's cold, right? Yeah, it's, we don't expect this temperature, but it's getting colder, okay? Then you lay in the trailer, and the whole trailer is shaking. And you open the light, and you see a person next to you, completely blue, freezing fingers, nearly dying. I say, Victor, what's going on? I, I didn't tell you, but I, I have a, a medical problem with colds. When it's less than 20 degrees, I cannot regulate the temperature. So 
and I'm not prepared for this situation because I don't care for cold, but he. So he put my sleeping bag, he put my things, I sit with my running clothes there, but you are together. What you should do, you can blame him and you get a lot of pressure for that, but still you are together. But it's not so perfect situation if someone tell you in this moment. A little bit earlier we can talk with someone, hey, can you help us with a better sleeping bag? Maybe this you will do, right? But this is the challenges on this tour. We have the first time CCTV come to Poland to make an interview for the Chinese audience. And again, because we find the right format to promote these things. But still, Poland is not exciting because it's our neighbor country. But what we realize is with the map we have, everyone pointing to something on the map and say, hey, my cousin comes from here, my brother lives there, I know someone there, and we find a way to make the Silk Road for them, not for us. And these two videos, sorry, is not running, but this dog was quite nice. One morning, there's a dog, very well-trained dog, and he followed me the whole day, the whole day. I mean, I call it making friends. And when I want to cross the street, he stopped me. We, I mean, we cannot talk, obviously, but he stopped me. He checked the road, and when it's free, he pushed me over. I mean, and it's one day before the Belarus border, so I could not bring this dog out of the country. But it was a nice experience. And we have to find each other on places we don't know. We have a map, sure, but Victor have to wait on a place I will arrive. So you have to organize that and you have to trust each other without knowing you very well. And if Victor is not there, there's no food, there's no drink, there's no bed to sleep. If I'm not here, he don't know what to do. So we find a way how to adapt to each other and many people on the road asking that and using that for their own situation, their own country or their own place. Um, people that know me better know I can be very angry and I can be very violent. And especially when you're running already about 50 kilometers, and then you get a call, hey, where are you? Uh, you know where I am, you have my GPS. Yeah, but um, do you mind you come back? Uh, no, I don't want to come back. You are 10 kilometers behind me. Yeah, you know, i stuck in the sand. Okay, use the sand plates. You know, I want to buy them when we come to the desert. Hmm, okay, we don't have sand plates? Uh, no. Hmm. Okay, you run back. I mean, there's no other option, right? And this is a day which is not very smooth. You hate each other. You hate each other. Deeply hate each other. I mean, 10 kilometers is not a problem, but after 50 kilometers, you have to go this way, not that way. And it's a car and a trailer, and we are two people, so one take the car and one take the trailer. That's a fact. And if you not do it, you blame each other for too long, you lose a lot of energy, but you not fix anything. And I don't know how strong people can be, but I learned on this tour a lot about Victor and a lot about myself. And later Victor will get a special role in this, in this project. You will be very surprised. But what we should do? I take the trailer because he not let anyone drive his car. It's his baby. He called the combination bagger van. I mean, it's crazy enough. People are asking why we have a bike. Because Victor cannot run that fast like me, but he has to make videos. You know, when he run behind me and shaking, is not working. So he put a gimbal on it and he cycled behind me. And we never locked the bike. We never locked the bike. And they tell us it will be stolen very fast. No, just short before the end it was stolen. But we think it's a child just want to go to school. What I realize when I talk with sponsors and authorities, if you make this project for your own purpose, only for your own thing, everyone tell you clearly, then finance it with your own. Then help yourself, we're not supporting you. You have to make it for the society. Like here, this guy with the book, he invited us to his home. They have nothing. They, the house even don't have windows, nothing. But he tell me about his marriage, his wife, the family, they live across the border to um, Ukraine. He talk about his military time and we have to sleep in their bedroom. They sleep in the living room on the sofa. We get shocked. They not accept we sleep in our trailer. They offered their bed. Yeah, sometimes we get prisoned with the car um, because in Germany we don't need the original document from the insurance for the car, but other countries told us you need. 
uh, Victor say, I have it, but we could not find it. So they prison us. Again, what you see on my shoes, That's the city name or the place name, Valislievka, and this is shoe number six. And what we did is, all the time when I change the shoe, every shoe get a number. I write something emotional on it, like the place or some people's name or university name I give a speech, and I write the kilometers, how much I run with this shoe. And how you wanna show this in TV when you don't show the shoe? I mean, it's not possible, right? But the story for the people, for the local media is nice because that's their city name. So the local TV have a huge interest to show this guy writing our city name on his shoes. So that's the key you get the media supporting you and your sponsors because you have a responsibility for your sponsors. I mean, they not give you support without any return. But also nice for the people because they really see you like their place. And this, the names is not decided before. The names is just in this moment I write it, I think about it. So all the names are very, very emotional. By the way, the temperature gets from minus 10 to plus 33. And Russia was the country I have the most prejudice myself. And when you want to talk about reduced prejudice, you have to be clear about yourself. I was very afraid about Russia. And I was that afraid that I talked with many, many friends in Germany. Up to the end, I get the personal phone number, the mobile phone number from an ex-canceller in Germany, from Gerhard Schröder, which is a good friend of Putin. And they told us, please not use it when you're running out of fuel. Only use it when you have a really big problem. I can tell you, you don't need this in Russia. It's a place I really, really like. And this is what I share. But my prejudice was when my shoes, the slippers here, is away. I wake up in the morning and say, you know, they told us the Russians are thieves. They take my shoes. Victor didn't say anything. He's a quiet person. Half an hour later, he come and say, uh, by the way, I, I think maybe the shoes is taken by some dogs. I said, okay, shut up, don't think bad about the people and learn, reduce it. It's fact, the shoes are taken by dogs. And Victor drive behind me very close because it's slippery, it's icy, and we have a little bit like Blavich Project pictures. Again, this guy have a medical problem with cold. And I say, Victor, can you lay here to make a video for me? And he say, uh, you sure? I say, yeah, uh, okay. And he did it, he did it, but he's nearly dying, really. And I'm very appreciative about that because it's not his life dream, you know? It's my life dream. Why I should do something that passion for other people's life dream? And for me it was nice because I'm from the mountains, I like snow, but he hates snow. So we have uh, very nice talks in the evenings, but we have also very nice talk with the local people, how you keep warm in this temperature, what you're doing, we meet people the same age like me, like these two Russian brothers there. We don't speak any Russian word, they don't speak any language. Uh, we, we know, but we talk one hour. We talk about Donald Trump, we talk about North Korea, we talk about Germany, just not with words. But we really understand what the other people say. That's why we say for education, you don't need in the first step to learn languages. You need to learn to communicate with people. You really need to learn to communicate and communication is different than language. And we had a chance to visit a reservoir. Oh, by the way, media. That's an Adidas athlete. And I have 361 as a sponsor and he should put my shoe in the TV. I like it. I like it because we put the city name on it where he promote me to run. So we make a combination together. And this is build a bridge between brands. Can you lower uh, up the voice a little bit? No, cannot, okay. And we have this culture bridge day, also in Volgograd. You know, historical wise, Volgograd and Germany have a history from the Second World War. So I force my sponsor to come there because their European headquarters is in the Netherlands and I say, here, you come here, we make an event there, running event, but we also go to the national symbols of the Second World War with young people together. And they did it. And this is what the people in this country appreciate. You bring others to face the history and discuss it with us. And it was, it was amazing because the young people have a different thinking about the Second World War than the older ones. And we run together, but at the same time, they have a running club there 
they're running ultra marathons in the desert, 130 kilometers. And they say, hey, when you come to our city, you know, you have the culture day here, which is also my rest day. They say, do you mind tomorrow we go running together? No, I want to get in touch with people. Yeah, sure. How much? Oh, five or ten kilometers? Yeah. And in the evening with this group, five or ten kilometers, and with another group, five or ten kilometers, on your rest day. Should you say, oh, me, 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 no, I don't want to run? No, you want to get in touch with people. Running is not the purpose. But we didn't calculate that. We didn't expect that. So every culture bridge day was also a running day. Everyone. And it's nice. You see, we bring the local people into the TV. They go home to their parents and say, hey, daddy, you seen I was in the TV today. This is much more efficient than you put yourself in the TV. This guy stopped me and say, hey, stop, stop, stop. Wait half an hour, wait, wait. Yes, you sure, you have a target, right? Wait half an hour is quite simple. No, take your time. He come back after one hour. With this, um, I don't know the English word for that, but this is what the soldiers have around them, the ID tag from the Second World War. Their family keep it because one soldier has died at their family and they don't want to give it to any tourists before because they think they take it as a souvenir home. But then he listened the story about me in the TV and say, I think I can trust you. You bring it back to Germany that this family is informed, their father, husband, whoever, is died here, and he gave me a letter for that. So this is really touching because you really, th th this is nothing you can buy, this is nothing you can push. This is touching and that's a real story um, which, which follows me the whole life. And it was worth to wait that long because another family know now what happens with the person they miss. The pulse is going up. We're running on a culture bridge day and we go to all the heritages. And again, every day, two minutes live in TV shows all that. So we can promote on TV these destinations. And after the people realize from these governments and these places, oh, he make live every day and show the nice things. Everyone wanna be a part of that. But before when we ask, can you support? Everyone say, uh, no, <laughs> we don't know if you really can do it. It's a risk for us. So you, in tourism industry, sometimes you need to trust the adventurers. You have to prove what they're doing and how they're doing and how they prepare, but learn to trust. And bring sponsors in their countries. They set up new business corporations. They think about how we can sell our product in these countries. They get the first contact there. The first fence is broken down. And we learn from generations. I mainly talk with children and with very old people because they can tell you the history and the future. The people in my age always say, ah, that's crazy, I will not do that. The, kid, the kids always say, wow, that's crazy, I also will do that. And the old people say, yeah, I think you can do that. But my age say, ah, I don't know. And Victor and me, we meet many people, they want to drink with us, but we cannot drink, you know, so. We try to be without drinking in Russia, which is quite challenging, but it works. They're not angry or something like that. Then we go to Kazakhstan, and I think I can, I can run without a shirt, you know, I'm quite naive, I run without a shirt, so I get a really, really big sunburn, level three, and sleep on that. It's not so nice. And why you think our head is between the trailer and the bug? If you watch carefully, you see also our shuffle. Again, we're stuck in the sand, and again, Victor say, I will buy the sand plates when we come to the desert. Yeah, it's fine, I know already. Running back, helping out, but now we take it with more fun. So even the biggest challenge you can take with fun, once you experienced it, you know, okay, what happens now, we have to suffer. Okay, let's take it out, let's find a place to sleep, finish this day. Uh, why this video is always continuing, this is my day. I don't want to show you a whole length video, but it's, it's just running every day. And Runner's World was visiting me, and he write in an article, I cannot run like this guy, because he always stop and continue, stop and continue. Stop. For every person on the road, he stopped. Yeah, I'm, I'm there for build bridges, right? So for every, for every person, I stop, and um, this makes them more interesting. Okay, I try to speed up. Just give you some impressions and all these pictures which is aired 
in China in the TV, in Germany in the TV, even in some other national TVs, in the local TVs, because we find a format for that. If you're a filmmaker, we have no idea about filmmaking. I make all the pictures like the Chinese do in this format, and Victor one day say, uh, one question, how you wanna put these pictures in a TV? Uh, why you tell me now, not earlier? So that's why from Poland we have not so many exciting pictures because I always make this. And for TV, we realize if you want to get the awareness for the TV, they don't have the budget or sometimes not interest to bring the camera team to the desert or to places outside because it costs a lot of money. If you make the footage yourself and you say, we, if we make an interview, we give you the footage, they're completely happy. They cut it, they have a cut, they make everything. But don't ask us to bring a camera team outside to your place. You need to have a lot of discipline because I, I don't know if any one of you have been in a desert. Who has been in a desert? Okay. Um, I don't believe in motivation because even I watch the picture of my son, I hate to run there. It's hot, it's painful. The only thing is helpful is discipline, discipline, discipline. And at the same time, this is the altitude profile. From one day to the next, very sharp is getting higher and higher, but unfortunately you have to run down before you climb the next one. They didn't tell me before, and I don't check it so seriously. These guys coming with a big SUV to us, and we think they are killing us, because they have guns in the car, and it's, it looks like a tank. They just saw the bug, the one guy of them is a fan of bugs, and he want to see these crazy people in the desert with a bag of and that's a challenge. You know you have to reach the daily target. You could not be delayed because we are Germans. And in China they're asking which day you arrive. They want to have an Excel sheet. And half of the way is distance, uh, the, 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 the desert. And it's not one desert, it's a, quite a few deserts. And this was Victor's time because he loved it when it's warm. For me, it's okay, I like it. Um, but when you only see desert, for one month it's okay maybe, for two months, three months, and it's getting up to 50 degrees plus Celsius, and you come from a country which is also quite hot, and if you're not trained for that and you're not grown up there, then it's quite challenging. And you have to learn how the water consumption works, how many water you need, and when your body tells you, ah, sorry, yesterday I forgot to buy water, then you don't have water. Then you drink beer or coffee, or instant coffee, which are already fixed. And when we talk about history, this guy in the middle is our guide in Uzbekistan. He explained us the whole country on a not tourism guide view. That's what people talking about their country. I had the first pain, I get the first injury, I go to hospital, the doctor is laughing and say, you're running every day, what do you expect? It's normal, just take this cream and you cannot make a rest, I understand, then just continue, it will be painful, it's fine. Okay? In other countries, they're not so fast suffering like us in Germany. Again, we show the world heritage, like this is a UNESCO heritage, we get in touch with the people, we meet the Chinese ambassador in Tashkent, which is quite unique as a German, we don't have a Chinese passport, but luckily no one asked for our passport, they know us already from all the media. And we get a TV show live, talking with young people about motivation, about discipline, about how you can chase your live stream, what you do when you really wanna give up your university because it sucks and it's hard and it's painful. And um, that's something which also benefits the countries. You need something to encourage your own society, not only tourism, because the people's society have more trust to tourism when they get encouraged by that. As was Children's Day in Uzbekistan, Children's Day, where's your child? My wife gave me a very bad call. Ah, Children's Day, don't talk about me. You're not at home. Yeah, it's her right. It's honestly, it's her right. If you be a mother, you will understand this. Again, we bring sponsors to Uzbekistan to get the first contacts there. And you can know many things from books and from TV, but what all the speakers before say, you need experience. As a tourist, you need to experience how the people are, how they look to you, how they talk to you.
and we talked with them, I think like on this in this video. Of Uzbekistan, I asked them what they want to say about their country. When I talk about Uzbekistan, I can so give my point of view. But what they want to say other people about Uzbekistan, for example, what's their impression <laughs> other people should get? And again, you make them as a stars. You make them as an important person. And at the same time, you can promote heritages. And on this place, this guy meet me in Kyrgyzstan. He follow me since the preparation and he say hello to me in this way. Hello, I'm happy you are here. And um, I like Hitler so much. Please tell me more about him. You're German, the camera is running. What you should say? It's like here, you not give hands. You know, there's a culture gap between us. I say, I just arrived. Maybe we can drink a tea first. You know, I want to bring the cameras away and then I want to discuss from my point of view, but I don't want to blame him because he has a different perspective. But Kyrgyzstan is the last country before China and I can see already on this picture the mountains. By the way, Victor made these pictures in an altitude about 2,000, 3,000 meters. But it takes me one day to convince him there because he forgot to tell me he's afraid of height. Quite challenging because without pictures there is not so funny. And we have Runners World and someone from an American uh, running magazine, they're running the Pamir Highway. You can see here the slopes we're running up the last day before we reach the top. And they say in their articles, this guy have the most, sorry for the word, shit running style we ever seen. And my answer was, yeah, but it's still working since 7,000 kilometers. Because I'm not a runner, I have no idea what's a running style. I just have to run every day. That's human being. Running and walking is human being. Don't think too much. Don't make it too complicated. Don't make it crazy. This makes me afraid and then I lose my trust. And Victor have to bring this thing with the soap bubbles inside and he don't know why and I told him, when the custom take it, I will kill you. You have to protect it with your life and he don't know why. But for me, the whole project was like a big dream and a big dream is like a bubble. One impact and it splashed. And on the Palmy Highway, on the top of our altitude, I take it on and say, see Victor, this is what I believe in, in dreams. We can reach dreams, but we should be careful with it. Then we reached China and my first shoe I called happy. And in China, you're not allowed to make a picture on the border. Now I get a permit to use it, but how you make a picture on the border is not possible. Everyone making pictures from you, but you're not allowed to make one for yourself. So I realized when I crossed the border, they taking out their phones. I take my phone, just put it to them, and stay there. And the normal behavior of people is to give me the hand when I give my hand. If you give them the phone, they make a picture for you. And then we change a little bit the role because the custom took us three days in China. And then this highway, you're not allowed to run to the highway. But besides the highway, you cannot run. It's a restricted area. So you run in the channel between the highway and the fence. But every few hundred meters is a, a stop fence. So you have to climb over. Victor need a Chinese driving license, which is quite challenging because it's only allowed for three months, but we stay there five months. And you have to put all the provinces you cross, but there's not enough place for it, technical wise. So we ask a lot challenge for other people and they all find a solution for us. This is a part of the story. All the countries we cross find a solution, not want to stop us. That's very important because sometimes we suffer under customs, sometimes we suffer with authorities, but fact is they help us. Why? We want to show their countries in a positive point of view. The bad things we all know. Victor's car was broken. We need uh, new clutches. Find new clutches for an 84 Volkswagen Beetle produced in Mexico, in China. It's quite difficult. They like more new cars. So we get someone help us send it from Europe to China. Then they have a manual book and put it in. I don't know how it works, but it works. There's a little shoe of my son. The other shoe is with my wife. And we say we will unite them in Shanghai. And every place I put the shoe, I will bring my son in later as a new tourist. You see the logo, the panda bear and the oak leaf. My Chinese name is Xiong, and this is uh, the Chinese word for bear. The national symbol for China is the panda bear. The first name of my son is Xavier Shishu, and Shishu means strong tree. So the oak tree is a German national symbol. So we create our own logo for this project, which reminds me all the time, family is the most important in the world. 
And I think this unites us in all the countries. I don't see any country who not agree. Family is the most important in our lives. Then we have a company from Shanghai, they ask, hey, when you're coming to Gobi Desert, can you make a detour and running with us for maybe 80 kilometers with our company? Yeah, sure, detour is no problem. And then one of the most exciting moments in my life after six months, they make a surprise for me. It was planned four weeks later. They bring my wife and my son to me and I was afraid. He recognized me. He say, still say daddy or he say, who is this guy? And I told my wife, not bring him directly to me. That's too fast. Put him down and we see what happens. And this moment to wait if he come or not feels like hundreds of years. It feels like hundreds of years. But who make the video? Victor, who not see his family the same long time. You can imagine that. You have to picture the happiness of another one during you miss your own family. So this you have to see in the background when you talk about projects and emotions and storytelling. And he was so nervous and afraid that when the video is not working, I get very angry. And at the same time, he's missing his family. And this is what, again, the people locally we meet get appreciated because we really show how important family is. And we show we are not different. You may have a different face, a different skin color, a different religion, but you love families, right? Um, he not put the crown on me, he take the crown because he's the king, he say. It was my birthday and we meet the National Tourism Bureau of China, which is a great honor. And from this moment on, we get more support in China, of course. Just one meet, one picture we can post and we get more awareness and more support. And we're running and running and see nice places. And always keep in mind why you're doing that is meet people, build bridges, reduce the prejudice, show the nice stories of this country. But you cannot plan everything. And when you cannot plan anything, sometimes things happen you don't like. Like in Gobi, I expect only sand. This is Gobi. This is also Gobi Desert. And I learned from Afghanistan pictures yesterday, there's not only dry and sand. You have mountains, you have snow, it's possible to ski in Afghanistan. People don't know that. We should tell them. Then we get a lot of rain. And the Chinese always looking to us how we dig the road free. And after we did this, because we do have to pass with his car, they say, thank you, thank you. The Germans are really nice. They help us to open the street. But no one helps us. It's not bad. It's nothing bad, but it's just something you get confused. And then, 1,200 kilometers before Shanghai, I had an accident. Both of my heel bones are broken in thousands of pieces. And I sit for several months in a wheelchair and no one can tell me if I ever can walk or not. I make the surgery in China because you cannot break down prejudice and say, no, let me fly home to Germany. I don't trust another country's medicine. Everyone convinced me to fly back. I say, no, I make it in China because it happens here and was a good decision. But we promise we finish in Shanghai. That's what we're starting for, Victor and me. So when Victor comes to the hospital, he tell me his car is broken the same day. I tell him, oh, nice, my feet also. So what we did is, Victor's only question was, you know, car is broken, your feet is broken, how much? And I say, 20. And my wife say, what are you guys talking? What is 20? I say, runner, no feet, driver, no car. Victor have to continue. I mean, we are a team, right? So Victor starts running every day 20 kilometers, 1,200 kilometers to Shanghai. I make the surgery and continue from hospital to hospital with my recovery program. I know it's the way we go to Shanghai. In life, you cannot give up because if you give up in life, you make suicide. Why we should do that? Life is too beautiful. Now I know how it feels in a wheelchair. I'm more appreciative about the people they have to suffer in a wheelchair. I talk with the governments. This is not friendly for handicapped people. My son control everything since this moment. He know daddy is handicapped. So even the camera he checked is something bad inside. There is no taxi can take me with a wheelchair. They don't do in China at this, in these cities. So, okay, you sit in the back of the car. There's no problem. In the train, my wheelchair not fits in, so I have to sit on my butt on the entrance door because we cannot bring the wheelchair in. Doesn't matter. We promise we finish in Shanghai. Keep your promise. Keep your promise. And this is why we get support from sponsors and others because we could show them before 
That's a part of life. Whatever happens, we will find a solution. Maybe the solution is different than expected. And I'm not allowed to walk. So I go with my Bavarian traditional leather trouser and my sponsored shirt. The first steps against the doctor's recommendation, and I can tell you, it's painful like hell. But I cannot go by wheelchair crossing a finish line in a running project. It's not possible. And again, this bubble is live cream. And then something happens with this company that was with us in the Gobi Desert running. They organize a finish event, and they rent a whole vessel and make a reconstruction with their own exhibition hall in English and in Chinese, one floor, only exhibition for our pictures and, and stuff we have with us, one floor for the dinner and one floor for the party. I mean, we didn't expect that. We totally didn't expect that it cost a lot of money. But everyone now wants to be a part of this running event and all the countries are there. They make the last 10 kilometers running and every country have their own container where the runners have to stop, get a stamp in their, in their paper to appreciate the, all the countries they're supporting that. By the way, my son also has the Bavarian traditional leather trousers because I believe in traditions. It's a challenge for sponsors, especially for sports sponsors. But And Victor, get a picture you normally not get with a car at the Bund in Shanghai. And they organize so many people come that they, there is people that never run in their life. They run 10K on that day. And they make their own medal for all the people they're running with my panda bear and my oak leaf means with my family logo. And everyone want to have my family logo because it's a Chinese part inside. So help the people from their perspective. And this is the most aired video all around our awareness we get, because everyone is expecting I'm, I'm going with the wheelchair on the finish line. But I, I write a safety handbook before the project and it was written, even I have to crawl it. I will not use a wheelchair or someone carry me out with that. Because the same time I do this project, I'm a role model for my son, right? What I do as a daddy, he do later for himself, or say, daddy, you not do it, why should I do it? And when he is in the university and he wanna give up, I say, our family don't know this word. It's not existing in our language. Just one minute, then I finish. I know you have time pressure. <laughs> um, I will talk about numbers from people we reach and awareness for these countries because no one trusts me before and no one believed it before. And I'm not a blogger. If you look to my Facebook and Instagram, Instagram I have 3,000, Facebook I have two accounts together, maybe 10,000, it's not much. But I reach much more than every blogger, much more. And I'm very confident for that, I know how to do that. The reason is very simple. We try to involve the people locally, what we hear from the speaker before. We try to make them big and we try to find the right formats, they just have a need to create a story because not every company have a story, but they need stories for storytelling. Like in Thessaloniki, we talk with the bike development idea. And now I come with the bike to Thessaloniki. They have a story they can use, right? And they use it for an exhibition they just had for biking and cycling. So let's talk about the numbers. And thanks you for the UNWTO for supporting that. I mean, they not pay me, but they open some doors. That's important, open doors, because the doors are closed when you do something the first time in your life. We reach 112 nations with our awareness. So all the yellow parts, Germany starts, all the yellow countries, they're reporting about that. One small note or a bigger article, whatever, but they're talking about Silk Road and mention all the country names. I'm not famous in China, but with one post we reach 130,000 people when we show something like, hey, we soon arrive in China my second home country. I say that as a German. That's why we have to use Weibo and all this. With the cooperation with Xinhua News and CCTV, we reach in China with every time they show it between 150, 100 and 150 million people. Show the Chinese audience, Russia, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and all the nice countries and what I'm talking about these countries. We make 33 culture bridge events which force the local media to attend and show, hey, this guy like our culture, this guy like our food, this guy like to learn to make luncheon noodles. I give speeches in the universities to encourage the students. Why? Everyone makes pictures with you. Everyone picture it and share it on their social media. We only can estimate the reach about 2.2 million people. We talk with media companies and say 2.2 is maybe too low, but 
this is the share we reach because everyone want to be a part of that. That's why I say the Silk Road is not owned by someone and that's why I'm so happy. The Indian lady can, can prove that, what I say about this guy. I love him. I love him because it's, this is the way we need to do. This is the way what you showed. We make football lessons with people because Germany is a famous football country. I, 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 don't, I have no idea about football, but everyone in China want to play football with me after a running day. Okay, so what? This is the children, that's our future. We have interviews, we have footage, but we need 35,000 euros to make a cinema movie. We don't have a budget. I don't have a job right now. I have to find something new. That's why I say I put everything below this project. My wife blaming me, say, we have money up to December and then, oh, relax, there will be a solution. Relax. We want to make a book, but you cannot make a book without any budget. Again, the people don't believe it works. And I say, hey, give me 999 no's. I can wait for the last one. And the family drives me there. My son, my parents-in-law, my parents don't live anymore. I'm grown up with my grandparents. They also not live anymore, so they're not on the picture. But that's my part of the Silk Road. And as I said, there's so many other countries I want to go there. I want to I wanna run there or cycle there or do something else there to promote these countries. Because not every country have a high reputation, a good reputation. In Afghanistan, the people get afraid to go there because of safety reasons. But there is safe places, you told us yesterday. And why we not tell them? Why we not share it? Why we not allow them to make their own decision? So I not come as a tourist, I come as a friend. I not come as a traveler, you are my teacher. That's what I believe. And thank you for listening. It was a crazy project with crazy people in the team, crazy sponsors, a crazy result. But if you ever have a challenge in your life and you can think about the solution, believe me, you can do it. If it's not works, call me. I will help you. I promise you, there's nothing you cannot reach as long as you be serious. Don't dream and not wake up. That's not working. Thank you so much. And uh, I don't know how much time overlap, but uh, I think it's fine. Thanks so much. It was a real pleasure. It's really inspiring. I can walk then. Yeah, that's the most important thing that you can walk right now. And this uh, Karl Marcus, Kai Marcus Xiong, it was, I, I, I cannot imagine how a story could be more inspiring than that. It was real pleasure to, to see and hear everything. And uh, I thought of a words of a quote from Wayne Dyer, who says, if you change the way you look at things, things you look at change. I think you proved that in a great way. So thank you so much. It was really, really amazing. Uh, now we're going to have a coffee break for 15 minutes. Uh, you can take some coffee or something to eat downstairs and in 15 minutes, no, not downstairs, here? The, oh, oh, sorry, the next hall, the next hall. 15 minutes, we'll be back with the next panel. Thank you so much.